All right. Okay. Welcome. Welcome back to the Corporate and the Mystic Breaking Down Burnout, Episode 3. <laughs> Such fun with this conversation. Thank you for joining us. If you already have, feel free to say hey. Um, yeah, really happy to see you guys here. What we're talking about this week is the gifts and lessons for burnout. But before we get into that, just I thought I'd mention, Jen, if, if people haven't already, feel free to connect with us on Insta and LinkedIn because you and I are both, and Facebook, Insta, um, what's your handle, Jen? Uh, Jennifer Forster. My, you can see my name there just on the Zoom screen. If you search that, you will find me. I am an FBI dream. So easy to find. Me too. The Ange Coning is my Insta handle. Connect with me there. And I'm dropping content all the time about leadership and business mindset, as I know you are, Jen, too, and mm. burnout as well and how to get through and out of that and LinkedIn as well. So um, connect with us there so that you're getting all of that content. Um, yeah, welcome back into our safe space where we give you the unsugar-coated version <laughs> of what it's like to live through and beyond burnout and today this episode Jen I've been so looking forward to this one because the gifts and lessons from burnout no one ever talks about it but there are so many and they're so good they are so good yeah, yeah. and I think um yeah I think there's the obvious which we we said in our in our um in our text, in our in our promo stuff, in our marketing stuff, yeah, there's the obvious, and it's probably what most of us are seeking. But the gold, the absolute gold, is in the not so obvious gifts and lessons, um, which we really excite. I think that's why we're both so excited for this episode because they were the, you know, in Oprah's words, the Bing Bing moments, you know, the oh my gosh moments that for me at least, to have, you know, have given me the most freedom, the most, um, you know, you know, money and rich and, and beautiful friendships and, and, a, and, a, and being so fully aligned with extraordinary women doing extraordinary things. You know, the stuff Angie and I have been doing together, we were just chatting off air. We are so, we're just so aligned and we're going to talk more about that today. And some, you know, and a couple of little, you know, not so nice elements that that if we can be aware of through this, will really support us to stay in alignment, you know, which is the antidote to burnout. Mm. Yeah. So just like revisiting, I think episode one was all about the signs and symptoms and how to figure out if you're in or close to burnout. Episode two was, what did we do? Some little tools on episode, how? Uh, two, yeah, was really looking at the antidote to burnout. So, you know, oh, yeah. being, yeah, the, the practicalities of it, saying yeah, how to say yes, how to say no, um, and, and just managing your expectations and the expectations of others. That's yeah, right. that was episode That's two. Right. Looking back to me. And now <laughs> gifts and lessons. Um, this little process, Jen, you and I have done this together um, the gifts and lessons and we found it such a beautiful process that we just wanted to share it with you guys it's lovely and gentle and nurturing and the gifts are the unexpected delights and surprises that um, come usually well I do this process when a client or when myself has been through something really difficult or that I haven't made sense of yet or requires some processing and what I do is map out the milestones of the little journey the burnout journey in this case and we go back and ask like what were the gifts and lessons we might not do it in that detail today but the gifts are the unexpected surprises and delights that have just been blessings and the lessons are the decisions that we would not make again. <laughs> um, the things that we've learned that we need to carry forward as lessons into our future because when we make that kind of decision, it's not supportive and nourishing and, and it hurts us. So, yeah, gifts and lessons. Let's, well, let's start with the obvious, Jen. It's the obvious place to start. So mm. for your experience coming through burnout, what 
with the obvious tangible external signs mm. that you have recovered and that you're better now mm. well let me just start with recovered and better now i i think it's really helpful to to not be seeking i'm now fixed because recovered and better now can sometimes imply fixed for me burnout is is something that um it's it actually holds precious intel if we choose, if we start to see it that way and I'm we're going to share that today so i think it's really important that we don't see ourselves as getting to this this you know this end point and you know it is it, it, burnout is something that we can use as a tool to really keep our awareness shining brightly and so so i'll start there um, the obvious, the things I thought that I was, you know, looking for when I was kind of, you know, in, not on the, you know, not on the other side of it, um, of, of living with it and understanding it, you know, understanding burnout and treating, for me, I, you know, I, I, I think I've got pagan in me, but I like to think of burnout as you know, as something that journeys with me, like it's got its own identity, you know, if you work with me privately you know i i'm always inviting chairs into my space for my things to sit on to to journey with me and what that does me is it gives me extreme peace it gives me such a level of calmness when i'm not trying to block stuff and shut stuff out and slam doors on stuff you know when i invite them everything to come and sit with me I actually cultivate a relationship with those elements. And so burnout is that for me, cultivating a relationship with it so that it gets to, it's, it's a seat at my table and it's worthy, you know, of a seat at my table. And the obvious things I was looking for though, before that were things like um, I wanted, I wanted my energy to be increased. I wanted to feel like I was more in control. I wanted to, um, you know, feel a bit more empowered. I think they, you know, you could, they're the umbrellas of the main external things that I thought burnout was going to give me. And it, and they did. I mean, they did. Recovering from burnout. Yeah. 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 Recovering from burnout. Definitely those things were true. They did happen. But you know, it, they didn't happen first, if that makes sense. They were a byproduct of the not so obvious oh gifts. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you want to navigate this? Do you want to go into your not so obvious or do you want me to talk about my obvious? Do you know what I'd love you to do? I would love you to share the, the in real life gift you got just this morning. You know that you shared with me before we came on i'd love to start there about the seamlessness of it all yeah no about you know yeah. about honoring yourself oh right 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 and yeah the way right. You, yeah. and the way you said you know you had a particular day yesterday and then what you do beyond that yeah yeah so gift i'm just looking at my diary to see which mountains we we're supposed to climb tomorrow jen i've written them down here yeah so so <sighs> What I'm able to do now, and it's through very safe friendships, non-judgmental friendships, and actually I'll honour myself here, the choice of people that I have surrounding me now, that I'm able to say, you know what, that thing that we've planned, I'm not feeling it. So tomorrow, Jed and I, we're doing 22 mountain peaks in 2022, right? And it's going good, right? We're doing it. So tomorrow we were going to do a triple. We were going to do Wild Horse as the warm up, um, Beer Burrum and Mount Coolum and have a swim in the ocean at the end. Now, um, so that was going to be our triple. I'm feeling today like I had a really big day yesterday and what I'm really craving is a massage. I'm thinking like an hour and a half full body with probably 30 minutes reflexology and that's what my body is craving right now and I'm tuned into myself enough to know that now I also know that climbing three mountains tomorrow won't actually lift me up and energize me in the way that is which is what I love about climbing mountains um, it'll deplete me 
in this moment. And so I just had this conversation with Jen saying, I think I might get a massage and let's reschedule those three mountains for another day when we're both feeling it. And in safe friendships and in safe communities that you can choose to create, um, you can honour yourself and have that be. And Jen supported me, acknowledged that I'd honoured myself and I get to be... Whether or not I'm, re I'm supported in that self-responsibility, I get to be self-responsible these days. And self-responsible means tuned into myself, listening to myself. So, yeah, that was that came up in before we started our call today. Um, the obvious external things for me when I knew I was coming out of burnout was that my energy returned, I was sleeping better, my diet improved significantly. I felt like I was able to manage my life again, maybe not entirely in control of it, but who is? Um, like I managed my life again. You know, my skin started to glow a bit and I felt like I could engage in social activities again and like say yes to things on weekends and not be so depleted that I couldn't go, right? Now, these are the things that I thought were the, um, the signs that I was recovered from burnout, but really they're just incidental byproducts of the main game. And shall I go into the not so obvious ones for me, Jen, just to continue into this? Yeah. Over to you. And, and I really just want to, I just want to touch on what you've just said there you know, the things that you were seeking, as I'm hearing you say them, I'm like, isn't that how life is meant to be, right? We're seeking something that, wait a second, let me just think about this. Mm, that's how life should be, you know. I don't Basically, love the word should, of living. But, but, but it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty, it's just optimal. It's an optimal way of living. And yet most of us are not living that way because we've succumbed to some kind of conditioning, which is a, you know, it's a very broad conversation to have, but we're all, we've, we've talked about this in episode one and two as well, but we have succumbed to some kind of conditioning that says that's you know, it's almost the reward that should that that stuff is is almost the reward what <laughs> i know those, that the basic standard of living um an acceptable life and and i'm like when i look at that list i'm like how boring energy food sleep sense of control um the skin the social life losing a bit of weight like i'm like how boring like no wonder that yeah. wasn't inspiring me right <laughs> and for some of us in burnout they might go well they're aspirational goals right now they seem exciting to me but trust me when I say um that's not the main game so the main game for me the newly acquired skills that I have the permission I've given myself the gifts from and from this process um, I'll just I'll just go through the notes that I've made here. The first one is every day, Monday through Friday, to me feels as good or better than Saturday or Sunday because I am so in alignment with doing what I love. My purpose, my career, and my lifestyle have converged, and I don't need to separate them. So, sometimes it's good for people who don't have that yet to have boundaries. Yesterday was the most beautiful day. I had a VIP day at the Emporium Hotel, very fancy in South Bank with my client. Um, we had a beautiful lunch. We had a sunset drink at the end of the day, taught him a heap of stuff. He flew in from New South Wales to see me, to spend the whole day with me, right? Um, so suddenly I'm gone from, you know, really tired in this terrible state of burnout to having this amazing experience of my business where clients fly from interstate to see me. And I have the most fun that I could possibly have. Like I often say to my clients, working with, with you guys, 
is actually me just expressing my purpose and it feels so good like you know Jen and I we're friends we have some fun on weekends but like working with my clients is as good or sometimes better <laughs> because I'm just so aligned around career purpose and lifestyle I've built my lifestyle into that now mm. um I've learned, second point, I've learned to listen to myself and that example of not climbing mountains tomorrow, but rescheduling that is an example of me listening to myself. And equally today, because I gave so much energetically yesterday, today I will not be doing any back flips in pipe position with a twist. I'll just be. <laughs> with a degree of difficulty of 10.0. <laughs> right. I'll just be showing up. And attending to what I need to attend to in my day without any extra expectations of myself. And that's me listening to myself today. The choice about who I spend time with um, is really, it's actually really evolving at the moment because I want conversations now, you know, whereas in burnout, I didn't want to spend time with anyone. <laughs> I had nothing left for people. I want conversations now that bring me to life, that talk about big ideas and goals, that I want people who I can celebrate my success safely with and celebrate their success. Um, I want to talk about the quality of life shamelessly, unapologetically talk about the quality of life that I've got. I want to talk about my money wins and my, some of my, with certain people, I want to talk about my money goals right? Um, not everyone is positioned to hold space for that quality of conversation. And so it's not like I'm wiping people out of my life. Everyone's still welcome here, but I'm really discerning about who I engage with on what topics. And I always make sure um, that the community I've got for those robust conversations are, uh, is a supportive community. Um, coming with this is the idea I talked about money just before of charging my worth recently I've changed my coaching model I've put my prices up for new clients um, while the old burned out version of me would say who would want to pay that money for the burned out washed out up version of me well that's a very good question nobody would right what people pay for now is the experience of energy and life that i bring because i've made choices to live into what is fun for me what i love right not to say i don't get tired or i don't get down about some things some of the time but my overall choices every day are incrementally pointing me in the direction of the life that I'm building and the life that I love. And that's why people pay me premium fees. They want that. And I'm teaching them how to get it, right? My best clients show up thirsty, hungry for a result for that result and they bring good quality problems that I love engaging with the clients who aren't getting the bigger returns sort of sit back and go oh Ange, you know what's on the curriculum this week what have you got to teach me and they're they're expecting me to hold them accountable to the commitments that they've made to themselves those are the clients that I probably won't be working with in the long term right so this love of my business requires me, it's that self-responsibility theme again, it requires me to hold high standards because I've, I've got to play at a high standard to attract a high quality client and I want my clients to play at that standard as well. And again, that aligns with the premium fees and that's what gives me a sense of freedom and sovereignty in my life. I don't have to, hey, Gabrielle, I don't have to work my ass off 50, 60, 70 hours a week to earn good money. Sometimes I surprise myself. I'm like, actually, it feels a bit easy sometimes <laughs> for, the, for the, the great money that I earn, 
and that money's only getting greater right now and it's only getting easier and it's only getting more fun because I'm trusting myself to lean into this new business model. Like I hope I'm communicating here how much fun I'm having with this and it's scaring the pants off me, some of it, because I'm living into this new expanded version of myself. But this is my choice and trusting, trusting that as I move towards that expanded version of myself, that it'll happen in the right time and in the right way and if I'm gentle and kind with myself and if I wake up every day asking what is the most fun I can have today and what is the most gentle kind loving nourishing experience I can give to myself today I get to show up like this hey I'm looking pretty good today (laughs) um this is the not so obvious uh, wins, gifts in burnout. And by the way, the other thing is for me on the other side of burnout, I've given myself fresh permission to have great big goals. Now I'm not going to talk about them in the, in the broader community, but I've got some plans that are really just scratching this that's the surface of what's possible for me. And they're already feeling like big goals. And I know that bigger goals are coming. And yeah, when I bring that quality of energy to my life, because I'm all because I'm tuned into myself, you know, none of this, Jen and I haven't said to you guys, look, eat, eat more salad and drink more water, even though that's good for you. We've, we've been saying consistently tune into yourself listen to your own voice, Mm. trust yourself to follow that. And hopefully what I've very enthusiastically, and I'm on a high from my VIP day yesterday, (laughs) what I've communicated to you is like the impact and the result of that. No worries, Gabrielle, we're happy you're here. Just like hit me with some comments in the chat. Like how exciting is those not that not so obvious stuff compared to like the food and the sleep and the energy and the being able to go out on weekends, that's boring. Like what I've just described Mm. brings me to life. And I would love to hear if this is resonating with you in the chats, does that quality of life experience excite you too? Because if it does, that's what you can expect and hope for as you move through to the other side of this burnout experience. Mm. My gosh. A little bit of a mic drop there. So I've just... Well, you couldn't interrupt me because I was on such a roll. Thanks, (laughs) Tony. I was never going to interrupt you. You were just absolutely on fire there. And, you know, and that kind of brings me to um, a couple of little things that I just wanted to to touch on. What you just experienced from Ange then was vibration. You experienced her vibration. And her vibration was energetic, it was magnetic, and it was so, so inspiring and true. There was not a, it was authentic. That's the word, you know, inspiring and true, authentic. There was so much authenticity in that. And that is alignment. They, that, that's a that's a recipe for alignment. Diane's saying, I want what she's having. <laughs> it's like, a, Diane, you can have. Yeah. This it's, today, like what you're saying, I'm not finished. I'm no, I'm just getting warmed up. Right? <laughs> we um, say that to each other often, don't we, Angie? We say, yeah, we're just, go, just, just get getting started, go. girl. Yeah. Um, so what, what if you want what I'm having? It's a great marketing tool, it's why people choose to work with me. But, um, and Emma sounds amazing, yes. And I get saw your email just come in earlier, Emma, and I get, I get what it feels like to be so far from that. But what I want to show you is by making a little decision that's in tune with yourself every day, not only are you getting closer to this state that I've just described, you're building trust in yourself, which is like the like the foundational tool for getting through and recovering from burnout. So just wanted to acknowledge those comments coming in. You can have what I'm having. Absolutely. Make Everybody can yourself. have this. Make a decision for yourself today that is nourishing, gentle, loving, supportive, that uplifts you. Ask what's the most fun I could have today. Yes, yeah, a great question. 
what is the what is yeah what what is the most fun I can have today? It is absolutely such an empowering question. It's a question we never ask mostly. All right, I want to add some stuff onto that, Ange. That was yes. just gold, like so gold. I'm just sitting here, just going, mm, give me the, the vibration. I'm feeling it. So, I'm sorry, yeah. I'll let you continue in a second, but I can bring that forward, even though I'm feeling tired in my body today, such that I don't want to climb mountains. I can choose to bring that forward in a generous offering for you guys because it's not a mask that I'm putting on. I'm just bringing those parts of my experience forward to share with you because it's already there. Don't have to make it up. Jen, go. This is, this is your truth. You know, this is that, you know, this is what, hmm. Okay. Let me start here. Burnout is not your enemy. Burnout is not my enemy. Burnout is not Angie's en enemy. Burnout is not our enemy, right? It is actually the thing that carries the deeply precious intel for you to have everything that Angie just described. It is, it carries intel, your specific intel to be very clear on that. When I was coming, when I was coming out of my burnout journey, one of the things that was key for me that changed everything that nobody told me, in fact, everyone told me the opposite. I decided how I wanted my life to look first. That was the very first thing I did. How do I want my life to look? And I didn't censor that and I didn't get into, um, you know, I didn't, um, and it was, a, you know, it, it wasn't just a five second process. I spent some really, you know, some time really immersed in that. How do I want my life to look? And I gave up the things that, that society would shame me about, you know, things like, you know, I was supposed, you know, you're supposed to, you know, um, have X amount of money in the bank. You're supposed to have a certain, you know, car and house and, you know, you're, you know, all these markers that define success externally. I let them all go. And it was a process because I had to become really, um, I had to listen to myself. I had to become tuned into that part of me. You let them yep. go conceptually and you let them go physically. I remember you selling your stuff. I, I, I let it all burn. I let it all burn because here's the thing. What I was living in was the belief that that was all the source. All that was the source of me. Mm. And it's not. No. It's just stuff. And it's just stuff that, that will suck the life out of you trying if you if you become a slave to what you think is outside of you now I want to you know I want to make this very very clear here because this isn't an all or nothing and I'm always working with my people on letting go of this either or it's not this or that I let myself experience both ends of the spectrum you know I don't know if you, you all know Miley Cyrus on that wrecking ball I often see myself as Miley Cyrus on that wrecking ball because I went all the way one way where I had it all I had the business and the and the you know the big income and you know the significance and all of that I had all that and then I let it go and then the pendulum swung the wrecking ball swung all the way back the other way. And then there was me on this wrecking ball where I let everything go. And I went, I just wanted to find out who I was without that. Who, you know, who am I? What do I have? What do I offer? What can I bring to the table without all of that? And here's the thing that I discovered when I started to do this work. I started to understand that I am the source of everything, everything. You can take, it can all be dissolved like that, all of it. It can all be taken away like that. And I am the source. I, I can create it all again because I am a never ending well of creativity and inspiration and productivity so long as I'm tuned in to this part of myself. So where is my wrecking ball now? There is no wrecking ball. It's come to a complete stop 
and there I stand and I can have this and I can have this on any given day. I can have um, uh, something I said to someone the other day, you know, about money. Just pop in the chat if you've got some money stories because we've got a really cool surprise for you coming up um, as well. Yeah, so we, got, we yeah. do. So if you have money stories or or money freaks you out or you get that icky feeling around money, if that's you, yes. It was me. My gosh, it was me too. And I know, Ange, you've had that in some degree as well, you know, because you were saying you want to share your success you know, without feeling like you're going to be shamed for that. Yeah, this is a, it's a big, big subject, the whole money thing. But here's the thing. If you are not aligned with your money, if you're not aligned with receiving, if you're not aligned with um, the abundant, the vibration of abundance, you are actually a walking repellent for it. So coming into alignment, this is the, you know, the, the, the unknown gift of burnout for me was that I was going to, inside of that intel, I was going to connect to the truth of me, the truth of me that can have a big bank account full of money and love the shit out of it and love it so much because it's not who I am. It's just, it's just something that's in my life. And it doesn't own me. It doesn't define me. It doesn't make me who I am. It's something that I can create over and over and over again, much like I can create anything else in my life over and over again. There is not, you can take every single thing away from me. And how do I know this? Because I did it. I, I proved this to myself. And I'm not suggesting anyone has to do this, but I- You don't have to go and sell all your stuff. Like you don't have to do all this. But I proved to myself that- Nothing outside of me defines me. Nothing outside of me defines me. I define me. I am the source of who I am and what I bring to this world. And when you connect to that, there is not a single thing that will shame you about that, that will have you believe it's good or bad, right or wrong, will have you choosing someone else's blueprint for success over what is your blueprint for success. My blueprint for success doesn't have me go to an office nine to five. My blueprint for success doesn't have me um, selling out on my soul and my values. My blueprint for success, I know the lifestyle I want. I want a lifestyle where my mornings are sacred. I want a lifestyle where I work with high quality clients that are absolutely up for big things and up for being in full self-responsibility for their growth mm -hmm. I want to be surrounded by those people they are the people I want to work with super clear on this yep I want to I want to be able as Ange said I love this you know my you know the things I love and the things I do they're not separate I used to think they had to be separate they're not separate they're exactly the same thing I never got this before they're not separate Everything I do, I love. I started to write a post. You'll probably see this in the future. I've got a post um, half written. Uh, there's a phrase, that, there's a saying that says, do what, you, um, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I call bullshit on that, complete and total bullshit, because it's not do what you love and work, never work a day in your life. It's how you do what you love that will have you never work another day in your life. Can I just pick up on Bettina's comment on this topic of work and alignment with, she's saying, my work Let me just is about scroll up and read. My job's about helping people. That's why she does what she does. But the industry is like putting, it's money pressure, right? So I just want to acknowledge that because what Jen and I are saying about the lives we created, we didn't wake up with this professional freedom that we have now we made incremental choices step by step over the last several years to move in this direction right there's a process to go through so I just want to acknowledge Bettina's comment on this topic of work alignment and purpose alignment um, so Bettina I would say either 
influence the model, influence the business model that you're working into or start to carve your own path. And if you can't influence the business, like if you're, you know, what you're saying is I'm constrained by this model that I work in. And you showed me a video of your office last week and like I, I feel, I felt the constraint of it, right? Um, so if you can't influence that, through expanded leadership into a, like a healthier environment for you, for your team, for your clients, a healthier business model, that may be a challenge you want to take on, or maybe it's a challenge you've tried and haven't been successful, then I would encourage you to allow yourself to think about just, you don't have to take action today, tomorrow or next week, but start to wonder if I was to help people with their hearing, you're in, uh, what do you, audiologist I think Bettina is um, if I was to help people have a better quality of life and I was to do that in the most beautiful healthy sustainable loving caring model that was also financially sound and sustainable what would that look like mm. allow yourself to wonder and dream about that because you could be the person in this industry that creates this experience for yourself, for your future team and for your future clients. And if you're noticing the contrast between the constraint that you feel and what you'd like to have, allow yourself to start to make a little decisions and move in that direction and start to wonder and explore the possibilities. So I just wanted to comment on that, how that alignment happens. Yes, thank you, Ange. Um, and I 100% agree with exactly what you said, Ange. You know, if, if there isn't um, space inside of the current model inside your industry, could you be the trailblazer that creates something because here's the thing about you know the quantum field you know if you have you ever had this happen this is a really good example of how the quantum field works so the have you ever had an idea and you and you've come up with this great idea and then and you go man that would be such a good I tell you an idea I came up with um towel covers for seats for sweaty when you're when you're exercising Years ago, I came up with this idea and I went, man, I'm gonna, it's going to clip on the back and blah, 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 blah. And I never did anything with it. So the way the quantum field works is that idea came down to me. I could have acted on it. I heard it. I tell you who speaks about this brilliantly, Elizabeth Gilbert in her book, Big Magic. If you've, um, Diane, I know you're familiar with this. She talks about this with a book idea she had. And then if you don't act on it, it just goes back up into the quantum and someone else will, it'll be offered to someone else. And then they might, and act, take action on it. And then if they don't, that's how it works. So let, you know, connect with the, you know, with those big thinking ideas and have them come down to you. Now, it's not going to be something that can happen in a day. Of course not. But just notice, first of all, your vibration when you start thinking, how could this be? If I could, des if I could have this, you know, what I do be any way at all, how you know, play in the possibility and then notice your vibration. Now, we might kind of think, well, that's great, but vibration is not going to actually do anything. But little, little pieces of that every day is what will start to bring the people, the opportunities. Um, Abraham Hicks, uh, there's a, an amazing book that Abraham, I have it here somewhere, Ask and It Is Given. It's an extraordinary yeah, book. The, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the three um, steps in, in having your vibration become the magnet for your miracles and by miracles, opportunities, um, do, you know, running into the right person at the right time. When our vibration is high, that is what's occurring for us. Ask three steps to this, and this is why, most this is quick manifestation 101 ask the universe always says yes some of you know uh, i've shared this before ask the universe is going to say yes that's the second thing it has to the third thing is are you open to receive it right are you actually open to receive it this is where most manifest manifestation goes sideways and that and people go oh it's just bullshit it doesn't work it does work. Most of us are not are not coming from the this is actually done, this is possible, this is a yes thing. We come from the energy of it's not possible. 
I, it couldn't happen. And if you ask and the universe says yes and you go, yeah, but, you are repelling it from you. So playing in the vibration of desire and possibility will put you, have you become a transmitter for everything you need to actually bring it into fruition? Yeah. Stay open to receive. You want to be a vibrational match to what you're hoping for, right? And how do you do that if you're feeling like shit and burned out? I've just received a message privately from someone um, on the call and they're like, sounds great, Ange, but it feels so far out of reach for me at the moment, right? Um, so how do you be a vibrational match to manifest and attract that thing that you want? You start to make one good decision for yourself at a time. And when you, when you have a great experience, like being on this call for me, or yesterday it was being with my client or having a drink, at the, watching the sunset over the city, like that puts you just that little bit closer every time. And then when you are elevating in your vibration, as in how good you feel, great ideas come and it only escalates from there so if feel if it feels far away from you right mm -hmm. now one good decision at a time and that good decision is like the one where you're tuned into yourself nourishing and supporting yourself um, mm. there's one other thing I wanted to say if you're managing a team right now and you're overwhelmed and you're burned out and you're probably doing the work of your team no amount of mindset stuff is actually by itself going to be the answer you need to learn the skills of how to get your team working for you more effectively so there is some practical it's not like recovering from burnout isn't all mindset no it's not practical stuff around managing your team around like drinking the water and eating the vegetables and like there's some practical stuff it's not all mindset but mindset is a massive part of it that will get you in the Mm. frame to be able to take those good actions for yourself mm. so. and I think Ange you know if I was to offer some because I, I want to just I don't know who sent the message but I want to honor first of all your sharing and even asking that question I want to honor you for for your vulnerability and your courage to even ask that question and I want to also share I've I've been in the I've been there too and I really feel for you and it feels like there's no like it really does it feels like this this is so hard this is everything there's no way out I'm so far down this black hole this well that there's no way out and I, I get it I really do and it can feel really shitty I mean it really can something that helped me was something, um, and we've talked, I don't know if we've talked about it on this series, but we definitely have talked about it before, is a, I think I've talked about it uh, in one of my programs. It's a thing called a, a small promise. So this is not mine. This comes from uh, Dr. Nicole LaPera. She's known on Instagram as the holistic psychologist. She has an incredible book called Doing the Work. Um, but she has a, a practice that... How, how to do the work. It's also on my How shelf. to do the work, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's an amazing book. Um, she has a small a practice in there that she shares with every first-time client. In fact, it's the only thing that she gives to her first-time clients as the, because this is the thing that... This was the thing that gave her that one step every day, up and out. And the practice is called One Small Promise. And all you do every single day is you begin to keep one small promise to yourself. Now, not 10 promises, because that's what, that's where the burnt out overachieving mind goes, one small promise. It could be as simple as today, I'm going to drink a whole glass of water. Tick. The next day you reset the promise. Today, I'm going to... I don't know, sit Take mindfully. Pardon? Take my vitamins. Take my vitamins. Tick. And every single day, it's just one small promise. Now, this is, you know, a woman, you know, this is from a, a psychologist. So, 
you know, it's a very practical tool. What it does is it works at the level of neuroplasticity. So when we're so far down in that hole, we, we haven't got the neural pathways firing that have us be able to see the, the light, you know, the steps, the little increments. So this practice, while simple, actually is a, is a practice in neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity just suggests the brain is, is like plasticine, it's malleable. We can create new neural pathways. So that, that one small promise every single day, keep a, a promise to yourself every single day, is actually rewiring your brain and helping you connect to you. It's right. helping, it's the pathway it establishes, Jen, is when I commit to myself, I can trust myself to back myself. I can, That's right. That's I right, can trust myself to be there for myself if I can keep that one small promise. And then that pathway, that neural pathway that wasn't there before That's becomes right. established and strong. 100%. And that's the, what we it's a beautiful segue for us at this stage to just share what we're going to be talking about next way, next week, next way, next week. Um, there are two foundation, to, to me and Ange, two foundational pieces, which we've touched on here and there right throughout the series that, that underpin alignment. And they are self-trust and self-responsibility. And um, we're going to really go dive into that next in our final session. Yeah, just yeah. To, to really give some practicality to that. Because why we stay in this, you know, in spinning our wheels and feeling like, you know, the, a whole another year goes by and we're still where we were and, oh, here, are, here I am again. I, set, I even set some goals and intentions and shit, here, here I am again, I'm still here is because we don't have that relationship with our self, S-E-L-F. One of the biggest gifts that I received through my burnout was a connection to what I refer to as her. She's the, she's the voice. She's the, she's, she's the truth of who I am and she lives inside of me and you all have that too in some, you'll call it whatever you call it. And I had no relationship to her. And when you have no relationship to that part of you, you are, you unconsciously abandon her over and over and over and over again, every single day. It's not a judgment. It's, it's just how we're wired as humans. So one of the biggest gifts from my burnout was to connect to that voice now, that voice is your alignment. It, it's definitely the pathway to your alignment. But when you hear that voice, if, you've, if you don't know someone, if, you know, if someone just walks into your house right now, do you trust them? No, because you don't know them. So we, even when you first begin to hear her, you've got to cultivate a relationship with her so you begin to trust that voice. That, trust, that voice is always guiding you yeah. on your aligned path. But you don't know her. You don't know her, so you don't trust her. The second piece is once you do begin to trust her, you then get to be in self-responsibility for trusting her. And that's what we're going to dive into next week. Yeah. yeah. Diane's just asking the name of the author, and I just thought I'd show you the book. Amazing, yes. How to do the work, um, Dr. Nicole. Le Nicole LaPera, yeah. And the you can find her on Instagram, Di, as the holistic oh, psychologist. Oh, yeah, she's in extraordinary. The other book for listening to your own voice and learning to trust it is Light is the New Black by Rebecca yeah. Campbell. And, and even her follow-up book as well, Rise, Sister, Rise. <laughs> Extraordinary book. Um, yeah, so Light is the New Black really got me out of a bottom-of-the-barrel moment. Like the, the, I dug deeper than the bottom of the barrel. I dug through the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> and I was so feeling so lost and burned out at the time. Um, and light is the new black and I, se I sent it to a lot of clients that I've worked with since and friends who have expressed that I just don't know what to do with my life or what to do next um, light is the new black is a good one and then this is more sort of the psychology of your social conditioning and the impact that it's having on your life right now and how to deal with that but the holistic psychologist if even if you don't read this book 
her posts are just get onto Instagram. You don't actually need the book if you follow her on Instagram because she's, she's very, very generous in her sharing. Very yeah. generous in her sharing. Yeah. She and she, and she invites you to sh- um she wants you to share her information. She's got no attachment to yep. IP and all the rest of it. She wants it out there. She's I yeah, she's extraordinary. Um, I just thought I'll give this opportunity to open up to questions because we're at 11.52. We've got eight minutes left on the call, Jen. So if anyone's got some questions that they want us to answer, it could be the gifts and lessons of burnout or anything that we've covered around, you know, how to um, navigate this burnout period. Um, please do drop them into the chat. I'm just writing that down, Gabby. Gabby's just shared a book and I'm not familiar with the author. So um, I'm excited to, I've got some um, Audible credits. I like my books on Audible because I'm, I like just the way I like to do them. Unless I really love it, then I get the hard copy. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to get that on Audible. Thank you, Gabby. Kasia Ubernik. Any questions coming in before we... I just want to make sure that if there's something coming up for you, something you want to share, even even if it's not a question that you want to ask, just something... It might just be a reflection or an insight or a share. Emerging for you now. Yeah. Um, what yeah what's what's coming up as we have this discussion um, what oh. did Gabby suggest I'm just gonna oh yeah a woman's guide to power unbound by Cassia Urban yeah I'm just copying it into the chat for you all okay uh, I think I did there we go and I'll just put the author's name there we go amazing yeah sometimes the settings just have hosts and panelists and you've got to change it to everyone so yeah that's it that's no biggie just love to hold some space we've got patina and carol and diane and emma and gabrielle i would actually just like to offer some space to you guys to drop into the chat what's coming up for you as you digest and hear this conversation today i'll just give you a moment to Mm. And so while, while you may be popping something in the chat, um, and this is alignment, Emma, yeah. And you know what, Emma, I'm really honouring you for even saying that. I didn't trust myself either. My gosh, I can tell you with full transparency and full honesty for, I'm going to say, nearly 50 years of my life, I didn't trust myself. I've only begun trusting myself in the last few years, truly in the last few years. And now that I have that relationship with her, there is nothing and no one on this planet that that goes before her. I Mm. trust her so implicitly. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. That's It's so okay. And just, you know, acknowledging that is, is just, that's you perhaps connecting with her for the first time. Yeah. She's like... Please trust she saw me. me. She yeah. saw me. I, you know, so that's a beautiful thing. I want to celebrate that. A lot. I've got covered in goosebumps. Celebrating that. And Diane, yeah. you've so not missed the boat. Like, uh, the, the us coming to life. You know, you, you might you might have noticed that neither of us are twenty one. <laughs> that's time, man. And you know. Do you know what, Di? The better. thing I. Sorry, um, Ange, I just, the delay sometimes, there's a, just a second enough of a delay that it, you get that thing happening every now and again. Sorry, if I interrupted you, finish, please. No, go ahead. I just wanted to say to Di, you know, I shared in my book the story of the, uh, I, I might have shared it on here, I am probably have in one of the, the episodes, about the angel of death dropping in and asking would we ask for one more week? And for me, I want to live, I don't care, it's not about age, it's about every day that I'm on this planet. I want to live in such alignment with who I am, what I do, what I have in my life, what I don't have in my life. I want to live it in such a way that I would never, ever need to ask for one more week. And so we can't miss the boat on our own life 
because we only have this moment, right? We just have now. And we get this now to be as rich and as vibrant and as energizing and as and as passionate and wonderful as as you know. I, sometimes people say, "I would I would trade my whole life for this one moment." You know, we get to make this moment, yeah, as as yeah. rich and beautiful as we we choose it to be. Yeah, and that's a life well lived to me. Bettina's comment coming in, um, you know, when we are people pleasing, it can take away from our true alignment. Yeah, we're listening to the voices of everyone else, thinking that we can um, please them. Mm -hmm. And most often that will come at the cost of you saying no to yourself. And Bettina, um, next time we see each other, go for a walk along the river or whatever we do. Um, I'd love to explore with you what would be the ideal model for delivering your services in a way that felt truly aligned to you? So just mm. allow yourself to start and dream and wonder. And it might be that you can achieve it in the business that you're in now, or it might be that you achieve it somewhere else. That's for later. Don't let that stop you from wondering and dreaming. Tap into your own voice, tune into yourself and start to ask yourself those questions. Yeah. Beautiful, Ange. Absolutely beautiful. We're just two minutes yeah, two, we've got two minutes left. I wanted to, um, I just want to drop a little teaser in here because Ange and I, um, in fact, this is a great little piece to share as well about, about who you spend your time with and aligning yourself with people who value alignment as much as you do. And Ange and I have begun, you know, this whole series came through just because we are so um, align just so uh, you know in the way we've built our lives and our businesses we are just so aligned and one of the things that has come out of this alignment this is that attraction piece you know the, the right people at the right time the opportunities whatever um, I have this uh, beautiful woman in my life who I've known for a long 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 time um, she is she's just everything money everything money she has got an extraordinary story. She is an economist. She has worked in the financial sector her whole life. She writes for global publications and she's the most rounded woman I've ever, ever come across. And we had this connection at Christmas time. We were just, you know, chatting with each other and she wanted to refer some women to me to work with. And we were talking about doing something alive together and it never happened Christmas and whatever. And I said to Angie the other day, oh my God, I've had this big download at our market trip on Sunday. I said, I've had this download, I've had this idea. We should do another series when this is done and call it the corporate, the mystic and the, the money. money and the money and bring my friend in to be the third person to bring this level of conversation to money. Love so we it. are having a collab call um, at 1.30 today to piece this all together. Of course, you, we will share it all with you so that you can um, join and register. You will love this so much. I'm actually so, so excited for this because to me it pieces in with burnout. Money is a very big that was a really big growth edge for it's me. It's undiscussable, isn't it? It's the under in in my dissolving my money stories, um, even understanding what they were and where they came from, and more so, where were they playing out in my life that I just had no clue they were playing out in my life. I've had so many moments, um, you so know. Yeah. So, so that's just, coming. We'll have that information for you soon. We're due to, like, we're a minute over, but next episode, episode four of the Corporate and the Mystic Breaking Down Burnout is all about life beyond burnout, self-responsibility, self-trust, self-love, um, and building that really supportive community around us so that we can sustain ourselves going forward. And then after that, um, after this series concludes, our little four conversations, um, at some point soon, we'll carry on with the corporate, the mystic and the money. So yes. one more Thursday call at 11 o'clock. I hope to see you guys next week. And mm. Yes, I highly so recommend the comments that have come in today. Amazing. 
Yes, and really highly recommend being on next week with us because we will be discussing the, those fundamental pieces of self-trust and self-responsibility. Yeah. And I adore you. You know I do. And likewise, we got so excited today. We could have. We did. I always feel like we could go a bit longer, but you guys are probably don't listen to us. So. Mm. And just acknowledging uh, the the transparency of all of your shares because some of you that I work with know that I say your your growth is in your triggers and your your triggers are your shadows. That's where we need to be looking for that next step in our growth and expansion. Yeah, and you you all being here is you doing that. So just truly acknowledging each and every one of you. And thank you for the darling comments of appreciation coming in. That actually really does hit us in the heart and means, means the world to us. So thank you. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.